as to uh, what is the you know uh, the reason the main reason why we are here uh, today, which is about the world we live in. Uh, that again has yeah. all these. Uh, you know, uh, all these issues we were facing, you know, then got completely uh, leveled by this uh, this crisis. And uh, again, because yes. we can start looking at the end of the tunnel, uh, we want to uh, share with our viewers uh, these takes from experts like like you that can help us navigate the time these times, but also look at the future, um, uh, you know, in a constructive way. So I would start with the first uh, question, if you if you if you will, uh, which is, uh, what is going to be uh, the most crucial shift in the business or professional field of of, of your expertise? Well, this shift is, is already occurring, and it's the way that we are getting information out there. It's the way that we're reporting on the royal family. It's also the way that the royal family is being seen by the public. So the shift in business and, and this expertise, the COVID-19 hasn't taken away what we know about the royal family and the businesses surrounding what it's done is that it has changed in how we deliver it and how we see it to report on it uh, the queen has said herself i must be seen to be believed well covid19 has cancelled the entire royal year we're not going to have the queen's birthday parade which is the most lively colorful celebration it is the queen's official birthday this year we will not be having that in june uh, Buckingham Palace has just put out that they're cancelling Garter Day, uh, which takes place at Windsor Castle. They're cancelling investitures. They're cancelling uh, everything uh, that the Queen uses to be close to her people. They're cancelling all of the royal events and visits to which the Queen sends her family out as representatives of the Crown to touch communities, to be there to show the people within these towns that the Crown cares. The Crown is there to support them in their everyday lives. And that has turned into a challenge that has been easily overcome by the Queen and the expertise that she has actually put into place to say, nothing is keeping me from my people. And we saw that with her lie, well, it was taped, but when they recorded live her COVID-19 speech, she adapted. There was one cameraman. He was clad head to toe in PPE, um, far away from the Queen. So putting herself in a potential situation where strangers who could be carrying anything are coming to record her, the highest precautions are taken, but that sort of chance was not stopping her from addressing not only her people within the United Kingdom, but around the world. And the same for members of the royal family. We're seeing an unprecedented um, way that the royal family just popping up using Zoom and all these other sort of video links. And hi, here we are. We're joining you live. We're streaming. The Prince of Wales did it from Balmoral, from Burke Hall. Uh, the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge have done it a few different times. The Duke of Cambridge just did it the other night along Stephen Fry when they did a sketch uh, resemblant of Blackadder. So even though there is a crisis and the respiratory sort of uh, issues that a good number of the population are, are experiencing, that is not stopping the royal family, from doing what they do, which is being there, representing, supporting, and being present in the everyday lives of the people. So the crucial shift is now going to be moving back to what was previously the norm, because with the ability to reach out through technological uh, marvels, such as, as Zoom and the latest video technology, there's a lot less involved in doing that. They can do it right from their, their lounges, their living rooms, their offices, instead of having to have an army of people come and set up cameras and lights and all of these sorts of things. So uh, the royal family has adapted in a very high-tech way to a crisis, a world health crisis that a lot of people are struggling to deal with. And 
aren't able to actually sort out what the crucial shift means for them and their businesses. But for the British royal family and the head of state of 16 nations, it's business as normal. Hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I think that um, it's a very interesting uh, take. And uh, if uh, there's going to be um, easier um, uh, um, access by the royal family, then uh, the role of commentators uh, like you uh, becomes even more more important because, uh, you know, uh, before, uh, you know, you had to work as uh, uh, not uh, besides as a commentator, also like the vehicle that was able to get that message out. Uh, but yes. that is also, you know, time consuming and it's quite uh, complicated. So you, you know, they can actually easier in, 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 in a, um, like in a, a more easily, um, um, in an easier way, get the message out and then uh, allows uh, experts like you to focus on the comment and what are the implications are of the messages and or the decisions exactly. that they make. Exactly. And this is something that we have to look at because pre-COVID-19, everything was scheduled. There wasn't this sort of, well, it's going to be a quick filming, a quick edit, and put out straight away. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a lot of planning involved with royal events, the setup, the scripts, the research we had to do to build the story, to then mm -hmm. insert the speech or the interview by the the principal, uh, whichever member of the royal family or Her Majesty herself. So when we look at the packets we were putting together for uh, distribution and for transmission, a lot goes into that and the research. But now a lot of that is cut out to where we can spend more time listening to the actual words, the meaning, mm. deciphering that and putting it into context for delivery to everyday people for mm -hmm. news broadcasts and documentaries. So okay. it yeah. is a shift and a change for everyone, but I think it's a very welcome change for a lot of younger people, especially younger royals who are embracing technology. But mm. the queen yeah. at 94 to be embracing such technology mm. and, yeah. and carrying it off without a hitch, I think says a lot about <laughs> So we are not ways. far from seeing uh, like a like a selfie by the Queen <laughs> on Twitter. I'm not sure I want to see that, but uh, <laughs> no, I, I would not be doing uh, that. I don't think so. uh, the only thing we have to be careful with the name of the virus, not to tell, not to say it too often. Uh, you can just call it the crisis uh, because you know social media are censoring videos or ghosting oh scene. right yeah 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 so yeah, just oh, that's right, about yes. that yeah <laughs> we'll just uh, say the crisis the crisis <laughs> yes yes yeah. uh you know which, which is a mirror of the time we live in that you know mm. uh irresponsible mainstream media can say whatever they want but then we independent creators you know we get just canceled without even uh you know a notice if we say the word you know it's like Yes, um, censorship anyway, so, at its best. <laughs> yeah, very interesting. So let's go to the uh, next uh, question, which uh, is, uh, what are the valuable opportunities or food for thought you see in your area of expertise uh, in order to surpass and recover from this emergency? What are the, uh, yeah, uh, if uh, if any, there is, um, you know, opportunities that can be um, taken or embraced in order to move forward? Well, I think moving forward is very interesting because so many commentators and people that are royal historians and royal experts, they are always taken by the big networks to a report from Windsor Castle for the royal wedding, uh, such as I did for Harry and Meghan. Uh, people that are in the know, that have the expertise, they're highly demanded. But now this sort of atmosphere in the crisis allows these people to just pick up a recording device and, and create and put their expertise out there and build something for themselves. So we're looking at a little bit of a movement, which the original way of broadcasting, the original way of using experts and historians and what I like to call talking heads uh, is changing. The format is changing because we can't be with each other directly. We have to do things remotely, which is allowing a greater way for people to go ahead and um, contact people through means that are 
um, literally away from each other. And that's something that um, is, is very interesting because it's how we come back to each other that is something that is um, questionable at mm-hmm. this point. How do we go back to the old ways when the new ways are allowing more experience uh, for people like myself to go out there and play with my own ways of recording and transmitting and getting information out there? I'm no longer bound by contracts or one individual network who's going to take me on. Mm. I can now go to the people directly and say, this is my take on the Queen's speech. There's no reason I can't get the traction through social media that big networks are getting when they had me on. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's making us all more freelance now and giving us ideas as to how we can actually harness what we had before on our own ta- own terms, in our own way, and do what needs to be done with cutting out networks and those that support the uh, the process of putting out non factual information and turning stories into their own narrative, where it has manipulated the actual story and the meaning of what has gone out. Mm. So it's a way for people to act directly and interact truthfully with a base of people who want the truth based on the industry we're in, which is history, historical reporting, and accuracy where the royal family is concerned. Hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, in uh, in um, uh, th- this is going to be for sure like... Um, um, uh, an exciting uh, time because uh, you pointed out that uh, everybody's m- most of the people or uh, many m- you know many people are talking about how we go back to you know what was our normality. But you're saying, well, we uh, are we have actually in few weeks uh, already uh, uh, enhanced a process that has you know, shown some better aspects of how we can do uh, things and actually maximize our time. <clears throat> and, yes. I, I, and, uh, and that's why, <coughs> especially because unfortunately, the, uh, the, 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 the mainstream media and the mainstream platforms like the one we are on or the other one that does videos, because believe it or not, dear audience, if you say the names of your platforms, they know that if you're talking about them, it's not in a positive way. Right. <laughs> so they censor the video. And, uh, you know, uh, I made this point, which, you know, once in a while I make some smart points. And uh, in, <laughs> in my video yesterday, which was, if you want me to have, you know, because they are against, you know, uh, so-called misinformation, right? But, um, and I've done journalism. so. In journalism, they tell you, you have to access the sources and compare the sources, right? So mm-hmm. since all these videos allow you to have suggested videos, right? So yes, why don't you, with your omnipotent algorithms, uh, structure it in a way that if I'm looking at something that is conservative, I have access to opposite you know, to opinions that are on the opposite side of the political spectrum. Why don't mm-hmm. you let me access these sources? No, what you're telling me is I'm going to cancel that source. So yes. you're doing the job yes. for me, allegedly, right? Mm-hmm. Like, you don't need to see this. Wait a minute. Right. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I think it's important, yeah. like, like a professional like you, that already have uh, like a website, like an independent website, where people can go and access content that they cannot even find on the mainstream platforms. Uh, yes. And that is original, unfiltered content. And that's why I think it's going to be key in the future is unfiltered. Mm-hmm. Yes, so, because it's not allowing us to be nip- manipulated. It exactly. is telling the story as the way it is and what is experienced. It's not yeah. giving over the information to some editors and some directors of big companies to say, no, that's not the narrative we want. So let's extract this bit. Let's extract this clip and splice it together 
to mm-hmm. create a narrative that yeah. wasn't exactly as it was said or stated. So exactly. it allows for less muddling and a more direct source for us to tell the truth. And no, that's what I said. That's what I meant. And here it is, unabated and not at all manipulated. You're getting it from the source as the way it was yeah. meant. Yeah, that's why people can, and again, they can uh, find all, all the links then in the description of the video. But uh, again, they can go and check the monarchists.com uh, and uh, the British um, uh, Monarchy Society. Uh, yes. Right. And uh, we're going to show the uh, uh, later the uh, the website. But again, it is very important. Unfiltered news. That's I think it's it's yes. key. It's really key. So moving forward to the next uh, question. Uh, what mistakes, and I guess we made many mistakes, but what mistakes <laughs> should we not repeat at least or issues we should, uh, you know, we, sh- we shouldn't overlook like anymore, uh, it, according to you? In, well, in my case uh, and my expertise and what I do in my field is making sure that the story is right, that it is completely free of bias. Both sides are told. There's no personal agenda inserted. Case in point, I want to look at the Duke and Duchess of, of Sussex and how everyone is speculating. Some people don't know, but you get these talking heads that claim to know everything, and it's more their personal opinion than it is based off of truth and example. So uh, we need to be careful in the line of royal reporting and in the field of historical expertise that we do get the stories right, that we remain free from personal bias and from a mainstream storyline that's going to generate more clicks and more visits to websites. Uh, that's the name of the game, and social media is is unfortunately a culprit of that. But it starts with us as royal reporters, as commentators, as historians, and, and experts on the field. Because if we are putting out information that is, of course, biased and has been treated in a way that manipulates the story, we're doing a complete disservice and uh, injustification of our own place in history as delivering these sorts of of topics to the people. And that's not right. We're hurting ourselves and actually discrediting ourselves by putting out content that is not actually what it is and actually doesn't help to convey what the bottom line of the real story is. It's speculation. It's a lot of fabrication and replication, which is harmful and dangerous to all reporting outlets, no matter which field of expertise you are in. And that is something that we cannot overlook anymore. Those are mistakes that we've allowed to run rampant for years and years and go on unabated, which has damaged so many people and destroyed so many people. And we're accountable for that. And that's something that going forward, every network, every reporter, every commentator needs to be mindful of. Yep, absolutely, absolutely. The the fact that uh, um, in general the media have abdicated to the role of having an, an uh, ethical standards in uh, uh, portraying facts, facts. It's it's really uh, a huge concern, and unfortunately. Considering what's going on, it doesn't look it's going to get any better anytime soon when uh, these giant platforms, uh, you know, they allegedly give us for free their services, but they're actually selling and making money out of our data. But then when we ask one thing, which is you are already making tons of money out of my data. I only want to exercise my right of freedom of speech. You are telling me no. Right. And shut exactly. up. <laughs> no, well, so, shut and, up, or I'm going to slap you in the face. It's not, you know, yes. it's, it's the three stages like, no, shut up, I'm going to slap you in the face. It's just like, excuse me, you are making money out of me. You're not giving me uh, anything for free. So, and by the way, there are rights, there are laws, you know, because they hide under the terms and conditions, right? It's like, well, yes. you, don't, yes. you don't have to be here. Right? You don't have to, <laughs> you know, but you accept the, the terms and conditions. You know, there was yeah, a, a South Park a... episode about this where Stan <laughs> was basically, you know, in prison 
and 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 captivated because he accepted Apple terms and conditions, and then he basically <laughs> sold his um, he he sold his soul to Apple. Mm -hmm. You know, so they could do yeah. anything they want. That was a very smart way yeah. to put it, and and that's where we are now. Mm -hmm. Well, and this is the thing. And if we look at curving what I had just stated for that last question, if we were to only put out the truth, imagine how many less stories royal in nature there would be. If hmm. we only put out the truth, we would only have a fraction of the stories out there now that actually come out every day. Hmm. The queen felt sad. How do you know? Did she tell you? No, she didn't. So these are the things. So uh, unless you sat with yeah. her over a cup of tea and she bore her soul to you, which I doubt highly is ever going to happen, you really don't know. So that's why I say we, need, we have a responsibility, uh, not just as commentators, but as private individuals to actually sit there and before we comment, say, is it factual? Yeah. Does it help? Is there any sort of untruth to it? And if I report or say it like this, is there damage that could be caused from it? So yeah. we actually have a duty of care to mm. those that are listening to us to make sure that we are ethical in every aspect of what we are saying. And that's why I, I just make the point that if we only put out true stories, there wouldn't even be a fraction of the stories out there about the queen yeah. and her family that are there today. Exactly. <laughs> yep. Absolutely. So let's see what's happening. But, you know, we have some announcement to make at the end that may, you know, go hopefully in the right direction. Uh, so um, according to you, uh, what conditions the American uh, uh, or, or and or the UK um, economy can uh, restart on a better ground or become healthier and, uh, and more uh, robust than before? Well, it comes back to that that quote. It's the economy, stupid, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and and that's the way it is. And we already see people chomping at the bit to get the economy going, uh, to say we are losing so much money. We need to sort out how we're going to be okay through this now financial crisis. And in terms of the field of of royal reporting and everything that is attached to the royal family. We look at business itself. We look at the world's biggest PR machine, which is Buckingham Palace. We look at the companies that actually uh, are making money with royal warrants, such as royal warrant holders, and how they are impacted by not being able to sell their goods or actually carry out their trades. Uh, there's a lot in the world of royal reporting. How are we going to go forward now that being paid by big networks could possibly turn into a continued delay in being used as experts with such uh, technologies as we're doing right now. Uh, and that's something that we have to look at is when does what I say as an expert translate into money for me if I'm not using a platform such as BBC or ITV or documentary makers? So to have a healthier and more robust economy in this field, we need to pick up the pieces and integrate what we have been doing in our way of changing how we're reaching people into the old way of getting people through the door to purchase goods and services such as the royal warrant holders, the royal family and what they do with their charities, even the queen with her own estates and farming and the way that those those residences such as Balmoral and the Royal Farms and Sandringham, how they make income. Uh, the Royal Collection is going to suffer this year because the state opening looks like it might not be going ahead for the summer visit to Buckingham Palace and Windsor Castle is closed. So that's money that is not coming in to go to the Royal Trust. So we have to look at ways that we can start fresh and say, right, if people want to visit the palaces now, why are we not saying, right, let's do a virtual tour where you would pay so much money through either Venmo or PayPal or bank transfer and let people enjoy what's there? It's not the same as seeing it directly 
in a tangible way where you're standing in front of a canaletto in the long gallery. Uh, that's a very different experience, but we can still offer these experiences uh, to help generate money for the Royal Collection mm -hmm. with a discounted price in a virtual tour, these sorts of things. And that's something that uh, as the palace limits people visiting physically uh, to literally two months a year, it might be a way to have a steady stream of income throughout the entire year with allowing people this virtual platform to tour the palace and Windsor Castle and things like that. So there's ways that we can take problem solving through the crisis and integrate it into the ways that we knew before to actually create a new platform to make a robust economy in my field straight out of the gate when things are supposed to return to normal. Mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah, uh, definitely. Uh, there must be um, somehow uh, in, in some measure um, uh, an em embracing uh, the challenge that we have ahead and uh, and uh, and uh, trying to build uh, something uh, different not necessarily new because you know uh, yes. restarting doesn't mean necessarily new I mean, no. mean use your hard skills to evolve what you do in a way that is still uh, profitable and again yes. when people say, uh, you know, they they feel uh, the you know uh, it's uh, disheartening. Uh, listen, we were asked to uh, survive this crisis, staying at home on our couch. Nobody asked yes. us to jump on a boat, uh, cross the Atlantic, you know, and uh, go fight like the evilest man has ever lived, right? <laughs> so, uh, so we have to be aware of that. You know, uh, yes, yes. and uh, uh, as as bad as it is, and we are all facing the consequences. There's going to be, um, you know, financial distress. Uh, uh, we don't want to undermine uh, the, the 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 difficulties like uh, that families are going through. Uh, absolutely, and uh, uh, but the best way to solve this problem is be active, be a leader in your uh, local community, generate. Uh, generate business. That's the best way you can help other people. Which, yes, yes. Yeah, brings us to the uh, last question, which is uh, what fundamental long-term changes you expect to see, you know, uh, especially because you have this, uh, you know, uh, take from uh, your your expertise from from the UK and, and in England and the Commonwealth. Um, what in particular in the Commonwealth, you know, um, like realm, you see, you see things might, might change. Well, tourism is a very big uh, thing that we are looking at mm. change with ca flights being cancelled, tours being cancelled. Uh, I know some of my very good uh, friends here in the United States were due to come to the United Kingdom to watch the Queen's Birthday Parade, Troop in the Colour, attend the Garter Ceremony. That's not going to happen. Their money is not going to be coming into the United Kingdom. Their attendance at royal events is not going to happen. So we look at these changes and say, are we to expect going forward that we are to return to normal, where people can just forget about the crisis and say, I'm flying all over, I'm coming here, I'm going there, I'm spending all this money. It's not going to be that way. Things will start to open little by little. But unfortunately for the royal world, a lot of these events are not uh, small, intimate sorts of gatherings, like little tea parties and that sort of thing. We're talking national events, such as the Queen's Birthday Parade, which sees uh, thousands of soldiers on parade, the royal family in full on the balcony, and hundreds of thousands of people lining the mall, coming together to watch this. Uh, that's not the sort of event that we want to see go ahead, especially at this time, because if we're trying to flatten a curve and stop a recurrence for the autumn, we need to take the measures now that um, are going to inhibit that sort of spread of, of what's happening. Yeah. So fundamental long-term changes are going to have to be planned for, and that is actually looking at royal events in the future. How were they to be conducted? How were they to be changed? Uh, 
any sort of event that includes a large grouping of people, concerts, festivals, all of these sorts of things. It doesn't just not need to be royal in its theme. <clears throat> but as far as international trade and economy, uh, where the Commonwealth realms are concerned and royalty is concerned, it affects everything. It does affect royal reporting, as we've spoken about the last four questions. It involves the actual traveling of people who are reporting reporting, uh, the transport of goods from royal warrant holders, the sourcing of goods and trade from tradesmen that are royal warrant holders, even those that serve the queen in their capacity as staff, as, as servants, as horse groomers, and all of these people. We're talking about tens of thousands of people that are related to a <clears throat> nucleus of workers at the royal palaces and support networks that are going to be affected for a long time to come. So long-term changes are going to have to happen across a broad spectrum of, of areas within international trade and the economy itself. Uh, when we look at the royal family and Her Majesty as the crown, which has an income of well over £360 million pounds a year, uh, that's a lot of money and a lot of transactions and a lot of trade and commerce that happens that the crown is undertaking. That's not the queen as an individual with what she earns based on the Duchy of Lancaster and all of her farming and all of everything that happens there, as well as the Prince of Wales and, and the crown in different countries as well. So there's a big impact that um, long-term changes are going to actually have to come into effect to make sure that these, these large uh, resources are actually going to be able still intact to provide for the people that it's affecting and it's tens of thousands and mm. in terms the whole country because the crown turns over its profits to the treasury mm. and uh, without that the government of the united kingdom could be looking at a downturn in their income from the crown and the crown estate so mm. it has a long-term effect that really needs to be analyzed and needs to change Absolutely. I think that um, uh, I found particularly interesting, and I think it can be applied uh, to uh, many other fields, the letter that uh, Giorgio Armani uh, wrote to mm. America, uh, where I think he made a really key point that uh, can uh, be uh, perfectly applied to what you're saying, um, which goes back to the you know authenticity of the roots of many of the uh, phenomena that we have we had going on and how to look at them moving forward he's he yes. said in his letter i make luxury uh clothes uh luxury dresses uh i'm a tailor i'm an artisan uh this thing that i had to invest so much money in this caravan around the world carrying fashion shows around the world, spending millions of dollars, which forced me to outsource my production because I needed to increase my profits to pay for this caravan of, of promotions. And he said, I, I, I never liked it. I didn't want to do it. I had to do it. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I want to just go back making my clothes, my, my dresses. And, uh, you know, so how we can apply this to what you're saying. Well, the point is like, why we have to spend all this money in these parades, in these huge events, when you can have something that is more, it's more sober, it's more authentic. Actually, you might give the opportunity to royals or people in the entourage to actually speak, you know, hear from them. Um, and, uh, and, uh, and, and, and be more authentic. So we don't need this display of stuff in general because now mm. we value much more, you know, the authenticity of it. And also now would be honestly, you know, out of touch to do something like where you show off some, you know, wealth of or, or whatever. So uh, don't you think that, you know, moving forward, that that's, you know, and again, normality is not necessarily what we had before. Maybe we can adapt to a normality that is actually, you know, more more compelling, but also more, you know, sober. And maybe that's that's good. 
<laughs> yes, and, and that's true. And we look at the frugality of things and uh, we look at let's take some royal events in particular and they're there for the public uh they're not there for the queen as a person she has a private birthday the 21st of april but her official birthday is as the crown the personification of the state mm -hmm. and these things are of course visually symbolic to the masses yeah. But there are ways that we can change that and we can make it more sobering and more in touch in this time because we are physically limited and restricted as to what we can do and undertake yeah. in the current circumstances. So uh, I think it's a very good idea that we look at these events. Uh, and and in the case of Mr. Giorgio Armani, it is wealth because he's appealing to people that have the money to buy his fantastic artisan creations yep. that you know it's quality. You're spending yep. the money on the craftsmanship, the materials. Whereas when you look at a royal event such as Trooping the Color, Her Majesty's Birthday Parade, this is something that is always done on a budget, the best value for money. It is sort of going to the... Uh, not the bargain carriers, but it's going to the internal departments that actually can carry it out themselves rather than hire out this this parade and wagon of Armani yeah. that yeah. you had spoken about. So yeah. um, I, I agree with you that there are things that are going to have to be looked at going forward, the same yeah. as, as Giorgio Armani had also said to the Americans. Yeah, Absolutely. So, uh, Thomas, uh, this was a extremely interesting uh, conversation. I really uh, enjoy the the really uh, uh, really deep uh, uh, takes that you uh, have in uh, in uh, not only in the in the royal uh, you know the British royal uh, history, but what is the life of a monarchy and the way it breathes in uh, our life. And, uh, and uh, has uh, such an important uh, influential impact on on uh, some, some, so many people. So mm -hmm. uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, uh, our viewers who uh, didn't know about you or your initiatives are going to be even more intrigued. And uh, we remind them that, uh, of course, they can uh, check the, um, uh, the website of the British uh, Monarchist uh, Society that you can see uh, over here where... Uh, uh, I, I will let you, you know, um, um, you know, explain better what they can find on the, on the website. Well, it's an educational-based website, which is fantastic, and it's still going under some little changes. This is the brand new website that we've just launched, and you will find so much education here. You'll find videos, you'll find facts, you'll find the truth, and a lot of really good articles that will allow people to understand exactly why the monarchy is there, what it stands for. But it's all factual, it's all researched. It is a uh, compiling of nothing but truth and facts. So if you're swayed by a Republican argument as to the monarchy has no value, it's antiquated and anti-democratic to have a queen or a monarch, that is false. And, and we spell out exactly why in all the ways it's there. We defend constitutional monarchy because there's something above politics. There's an apolitical figure that when the people are under that figure, they're all countrymen. They're not belonging to a left or a right political party. Politics don't enter into the equation when you have someone who is above politics. So you'll find blogs about um, the latest information and uh, sorts of themes out there where royal uh, points of interest are concerned. Mm -hmm. You'll see all of our media appearances, our campaigns that we're doing for the lead up to Platinum Jubilee 2022. Uh, you'll see a media hub there. You'll see a student hub where there's uh, lots of answers for students that oftentimes do a paper or a sort of research for uh, a debate that they can get answers to the questions that most frequently we find students asking. Uh, there's just so much there. Uh, it, it's a wealth of information that I think rivals that of, of the Queen herself in regards to her own website. It's easily found. Uh, there's so much there. So whatever mm -hmm. people need, it is in fact a virtual textbook yep. of monarchy A through Z. Yep. 
Perfect. So uh, people can uh, can check the themonarchist.com or can uh, get to know you a little bit better on your uh, personal uh, website that they see <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, over here. And uh, last but not least, uh, we have an announcement uh, to to make, uh, and it is about dear Thomas, <laughs> <laughs> the Crown and Country Radio. Yes, Crown and Country Radio. That is something that we are very excited and proud of. We are going to be launching the standalone website, crownandcountryradio.com, in the next couple uh, weeks. And we are going to have fantastic shows. And we actually have somebody who is with us who is going to be the host <laughs> of a few shows, Mr. <laughs> Joseph. And uh, Yes, that's me. I'm yes, so Style excited and Magazine. And, and extremely uh, it, thankful. <laughs> uh, it's going to be a great collaboration because with what you do with Style and Magazine and the luxury brands, but also you as an individual, seeing when things aren't right and how things need to be fair and balanced. And when you look at one of your shows, and I'm going to name it, which is Rebuild the West, is, is a fantastic yeah. insight as to what the West needs to do to remain competitive and build itself to be strong as it has uh, in legend and myth always been. But your other show is fantastic as well. And uh, I'd like you to tell people about that show. Yeah, well, uh, thank you. And again, thank you for this amazing opportunity, uh, Thomas. Uh, as you said, Rebuild the West is going to be uh, uh, more uh, focused on uh, uh, the, the values and, uh, and the principles and the stories that uh, have brought us uh, together as a West being a beacon of civilization for uh, uh, thousands of years. And uh, on a lighter uh, uh, note, we're going to have a living style, which uh, is going to uh, have as a main source uh, our magazine, uh, uh, Living, where uh, uh, that we like to call the Encyclopedia of Lifestyle, where we have uh, timeless uh, topics about how to enjoy uh, life. And uh, we are proud that we have always focused on excellence, not necessarily luxury. Uh, luxury is uh, is is temporary. Uh, excellence instead instead is 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 a uh, is a hallmark uh, in, uh, in 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 quality and and values, as we know, is the uh, the the crown of of, of England, where it's uh, it's about being uh, trying trying to be the finest uh, version. Of, of yourself and, and prove yourself yes. uh, in, uh, in in what you do. So it's going to be exciting uh, for sure. I can wait uh, to uh, start uh, working on this project. And uh, what uh, can I tell uh, about you, uh, uh, Thomas? Uh, it's it's fantastic to hear from you these precious uh, intakes in these very challenging time times. So hopefully, uh, uh, people can uh, um, uh, you know uh, uh, take uh, some important uh, information about what we have shared uh, today to look at the future uh, a little bit uh, you know in a brighter way, uh, understanding that it, it, it's not easy. But hopefully, you know, we have done our part in uh, uh, sharing some some thoughts and uh, inspiring people in, uh, uh, you know, uh, getting over uh, this and uh, being constructive and positive. Yes, yes, I hope so, because that's what we need to be. We need to be positive. We need to stay constructive. And in this time of, like I, I've said, physical distancing, it doesn't mean we need to be antisocial and remove ourselves from our support networks. And I think our physical well-being and our mental health is what really needs to persevere at this time. Absolutely. Okay, then. Uh, thanks again, uh, Thomas. Thank and, you. Uh, uh, hopefully, uh, you know, um, uh, you will be able to come back to our show very soon. I hope so. Thanks for having me. Thank you <laughs> Thank very you. much.